Hey everybody, I am back with another chat video and first of all, how have you guys been doing? As soon as I start, the little monsters are barking. <laughs> this is just normal over here. Anyway, I hope you guys have been doing well. It has been a bit of a crazy week in my life. Um, it's been a few ups and downs. Overall, I've had a really good week. But let's go ahead and get into it. So, um, Coco, shh, Chanel, shh, shh, shh. I may have to go get one of them. Um, anyway, um, let's just go ahead and start with eBay. And I have an eBay story for you today. It's not completely resolved, but I think it's resolved. Um, <laughs> we shall see. And if there's any more to it, I will follow up next week with the story. But I have sold four eBay items this week. I'm very happy about that. I will tell you, I was hoping to do better this year. Um, I had a much better January in 2017 with sales than I'm having this year. So I will be wholeheartedly honest with you and tell you I'm disappointed about the lack of sales. But, but on the other hand, I am still thrilled with the sales that I have been making. And one of the items I sold this week, I have had it listed for sale over a year, maybe even two years. It is an item that I absolutely loved. I did not want to sell it. I um, grew out of it. I Chances are my goal would actually be to get back into that item this year and be able to wear it, but I'm not at that place now and I haven't been at that place in a long time where I could wear it. I don't think I've been able to wear this item in three years and it's like I've learned to let go of stuff like that. So. That's not the eBay story, but I just thought I would throw that in there. Um, so it ended up selling. I have dropped the price over the course of the past two to three years on the item. Uh, the buyer and I finally came to agreement. It was one of the few items I have left m to make an offer on. I try not to have too many of those listed because I've been burned so many times with buyers not paying on that. I don't have a problem with negotiating whatsoever. I'm good with that, but I've just been burned with not with buyers not paying so I like to list everything by now because they have to pay for it right then and just a lesson learned. So anyway, one of the items that I sold this week, I think it was shipped on Monday. There's, I'm a little bit confused when it was shipped. Um, I get an email from the buyer actually very early Saturday morning, uh, very early this morning. Um, I happened to be still awake. I, I want to say it was around midnight. So I always think that's really the night before. And I happened to be still awake. It was Friday night. I'm no need to go to bed that early. And, um, so I looked at her email and it said something to the effect of, I've tracked this item. It says it's in Cleveland and I, it's supposed to be coming to North Carolina. And I'm like, well, and then she's like, wanted to know if it was lost. And my first reaction, I will be honest with you guys and say, how in the world am I supposed to know if the post office has lost it? I, I mean, I, I didn't go with the package, so I did not respond in a snippy way. I do not believe in being snippy. That's not to say I haven't done it in the past, but I always try to make a point of if I'm replying back to somebody to be as courteous as possible. Sometimes you have to be firm, but at least try to be courteous. So my thoughts were, how in the world am I supposed to know if it's lost? Why would you think I knew that? I would know that. I did not say anything like that at all. And if she happens to be watching, um, which would be fine, um, I don't uh, mean to upset you at all or anything or say anything bad about you because that's not what not not what's going on. And so, I um, you get when you print a shipping label from eBay, you get like a piece of paper. You cut it in half. One half is the label you will. Girls, you will tape to your package, and the other half is like a um, shipping record, and it will have the tracking number, it has the amount you pay for shipping, it has the buyer's address, it has the buyer's name, and also the um, their um, eBay username on it. And so, last night, or early this morning, I saw the email, I, when I see emails like that, I cannot go to sleep after I have seen that. I've got to deal with it because I'll worry about it. And so I went to where I had the shipping label and I looked at it and I'm like, well, this has got to be her. This one's being shipped to North Carolina. The username matches, but the problem with this one piece of paper, it doesn't tell me what the item was. 
that was my fault for not looking closely. So I looked up that, I looked at that piece of paper. I went over to PayPal and I found what I thought matched it completely. And it did 100% match this piece of paper. And I tracked it and I'm like, no, it's in North Carolina. And I emailed her back and I said, here's the shipping record. It left Nashville and uh, is now in North Carolina. I don't know what you're tracking. She said, well, here's the number I got from eBay. I don't, and I was like, well, I don't know. They've made a mistake. So, and she's like, oh, thank you for communicating with me. I appreciate everything. I went to sleep. So I got up this morning and I was still thinking about it. And I looked on my eBay page and I saw what she bought and I saw it had a different tracking number and I hit the tracking and it says it's in Ohio. And I was like, okay, eBay has put the wrong tracking number on their website. I don't know how they managed it, but they have done this. This is what I'm still thinking. So I decided to give eBay a call and try to figure this out. And I'm like, hey, the tracking number's wrong. And she's like, ma'am, I'm tracking it. It is in Ohio, but it's on its way to North Carolina. She's, I can see where it's going. And I said, no, it's in North Carolina now. And so we went round and round. And um, I said, let me give you the tracking number that's on this form. And she said, um, she, I gave it to her. And she said, ma'am, that is for another item. And I'm like, how can that be for another item? I've only sold one item to this person, or so I thought. And, um, and she's like, will you please look at it? And she's like, you've sold two items to her. And so I went back and looked, and oh my goodness, was I ever embarrassed. I didn't realize this particular uh, buyer had bought two separate items on two separate days. Normally when um, a buyer buys from me and they want to buy two items, which doesn't happen that often, but um, they will ask me if I will combine them and um, reduce the price of the shipping, and I'm always willing to oblige and do that. And so, but this buyer didn't do that. And so I, you know, once an item gets shipped, I'm, I will write it down. I sold it. I'll tell you guys I sold it, but I don't think, I don't look at who's bought it. I don't normally ever track it. I'm just like, it's out of my hands. It's now in the hands of the post office and hopefully it will arrive at the buyer's house safe and sound and they will be happy with it. Okay. So I looked at it and sure enough, I had sold her two different things and I had been tracking a different item. <laughs> And so I immediately emailed the buyer and I said, I'm so sorry for the confusion. I was tracking a dress you bought from me, not realizing you had actually bought a blouse and a dress. And I said, um, I talked to eBay. eBay told me the blouse is in Ohio right now. And she said, for some reason, the post office will ship things different. I have no idea. I mean, North Carolina borders Tennessee. Why it would go north instead of east, I don't know. But um, the um, eBay con uh, person I spoke with just said it went to Ohio and it's, it is on its way to North Carolina. It hasn't got there yet. So that's what I said. It, it's not completely resolved. But I emailed the buyer and let her know exactly what was going on. I told her I was confused. Um, Again, I don't know what's happening with post office, but I said, I'm so sorry for my confusion. And anyway, so that was my crazy eBay story this week. And I was going, oh my goodness. Um, it was me misunderstanding and then the post office sending the item up north instead of east. Anyway, so that happened. And within those four eBay sales, I've got my notes and I'll just put them back there and I still need them. Within the four eBay sales, one of those sales was a lot of books. And when I say lot, it is, was a lot of books, but it was a one lot, I guess I should say, with multiple items in that lot. And it turned out I sold 16 of the books that my dad gave me to sell. And I put them in one lot. And these were like thin, um, kind of like study guide books. And guys, I am so sorry. My neighbors are getting a lot of traffic. Um, these are the ones I think have church sometimes in their house on Saturday mornings. And because I'm looking out, people are dressed in suits. A man is dressed in suit and he's walking in. Here comes another man that's dressed up. I think they're having church over there. And Coco and Chanel can look out the window and she, they see all these people coming in. And I don't know about other dogs, but with dachshunds, if they can see it, they think they own that property. And um, as far as they can see, they think it's theirs and that people are intruding on their space. 
So anyway, just life with dachshunds, it, it's a joy. <laughs> but anyway, so um, I, even though I had four sales, I ended up selling one, I, one of those sales had 16 books in it thrilled about those going and then uh, three other items were pieces of clothing so um, overall it was a good eBay week a little bit stressful um, and I mean I do hope this buyer is okay she just thanked me for the communication so um, I'm, I had to put the paper back there it was bucking me <laughs> if you see me turn around a lot of times you don't see what's in my hand I'm putting some, there's a table behind me obviously because this tree is sitting on it um, but anyway, I just like, let me get that out of my hands or I'm going to rattle that piece of paper. I have one empty to show you this week and I thought about doing a separate review of this, but um, I have been really contemplating on what type of, e I was trying to say eBay, I got eBay on the brain, what type of YouTube videos I should be filming for my channel. And I like to film videos that have interest to me, however, I don't always want to put videos up that get it takes a lot of work to do this if anybody's made these videos it takes a lot of work and sometimes my videos get a handful of views and sometimes they get thousands of views and I never know what that key is that's making one of those only get 60 views and what one of them is that gets 10,000 views I just never know it's people are just interested in different things so I like to have a variety of videos on my channel but I've decided that I don't really want to do empties videos that I will include any empty items in my chat video so you guys can see them. And I haven't really been doing any review videos lately because some of those got a lot of views and some of those got almost no views. And um, anyway, I did think about doing a review separate, but I'm not going to do it. Um, this is the La Mer Moisturizing Cream. When I originally started using La Mer, I was using the Moisturizing Soft Cream, and I love it. It is now my moisturizer of choice. I don't want any other moisturizers. Um, but I was told the original one, this one, the, this, the Moisturizing Cream, there's no, there's no word of soft in this one, was better for dry skin. And the, I decided, since I do get dry skin in the winter, that I would purchased this particular one when Sephora had their 20% off sale in November. And so I got this in and I started using it after I ran out of my other one and I basically hated it from day one. Now I don't hate the way um, that it works on my skin but I hate putting it on. I mean I despise this the way this applies. And what it does, it is super, super, super thick. And I always add, um, like, a, my skincare routine. I will put, I will, like, cleanse, tone, put my SK2 serum on, then I'll put my serums on, then my eye cream, then I will put my moisturizer on. And with this, if there is any other product on my face, this will not spread out. I will put it in and then I will rub it on and I just get clumps of moisturizer on my face. And what usually ended up happening was I was ending up rubbing more of it into my hands than I was my face. And this is expensive, so expensive. Even though I got the 20% discount, it is outrageously priced. So I feel like my hands were getting moisturized, but I always wash my hands after I put on my skincare. Um, and then I wash it right off. So most of this got went down the bathroom sink and It just I hate the way it applies now. I 100% believe What little of it did end up on my face? I was able to it was able to help really control my dry skin We have had some horribly cold weather. I realized that in other places in the world it's much colder but I live in the south the southern part of the United States it's not supposed to get that cold here and we have been down in the in the single digits uh, Fahrenheit if you're in another country that uses Celsius I realize I think there's only three countries that use uh, Fahrenheit in the world or at least the non-metric system and so um, it was like one night it was down to six degrees Fahrenheit another night it was like eight or nine degrees and at certain points in time, I'm going outside 
in those single digits and my face can get so, so dry and I'll get patches of dry skin on my face. So that has absolutely helped with that, but I have just been so frustrated with using the product that I will not repurchase that one. I did end up buying, I don't think I showed it to you guys, but at the, sometime in December, Sephora sent a, um, like, they like, if you spend, girls, they're like, if you spend uh, $50, you can take $25 off. Coco, come here. Coco, come here. So I ended up buying this, I'm sorry guys, I ended up buying this soft cream and in a smaller size, it's half the size, so. I am using that one now, and I'm back in love with it. I love it so, so much. Um, let me grab one of the puppies. I think she's committing the most offenses this morning with a barking. This Koki. <laughs> Sometimes I call her Koki. Uh, Coco. So, um, anyway. Um, that That's with that empty product. So, there's my review mixed in with this video. And then, we had snow this week. And snow makes me really emotional. Um, if I have to drive in it and so thankfully I did not have to drive in it and um, it, We got a snow day if you remember I filmed uh, my chat video last Friday and said oh It's a snow day, but we haven't got any snow yet It actually did snow later on Friday after I filmed and then all of that cleared up by Sunday But it wasn't we got more ice that time. We got freezing rain and then snow on top of that but it was cleared up by Sunday and then Tuesday rolls around and it snows again, and I ended up being stuck in the house Tuesday and Wednesday all day. I did take the puppies for a little bitty short walk. I will not keep them out in that cold um, very long, but they ended up liking the snow. Last year they hated the snow, and they ended up liking it. I let them on the back porch a little bit, and it's um, got a rail system up so they can't get off of it. Um, and they headed immediately for the snow that went on the back porch. So. Um, I took them out. They loved it. They didn't want to come back in, but um, you know, I tried to be a wise dog parent and not keep them out there in that freezing cold. They do have coats, so they were wearing their coat, but anyway, um, I was just, other than taking them for a short walk, home for two days, so um, you know, I wasn't happy about it, but I was thankful that I did not have to be out in it. I'm thankful that I have the um, privilege and opportunity that if I don't have to get out, if I'm, I can't drive, I mean, honestly, I cannot drive in it. I get super, super anxious about it. It's the one thing that will make me have an anxiety attack and which makes it dangerous to have somebody behind the wheel that is panicking and in that condition and I just can't drive it. I never, I, I have before, but in the current car that I have now, I had a wreck in it in 2011 and and it very, very, it was just flurrying when that happened. And so ever since then, I have just been extremely paranoid about having to drive in it. I've talked about that before. So anyway, um, it's stuck in the house for two days because of the snow, but it's all gone now. I think the weather is supposed to be between the 50s and 60s today. So thrilled about that. And anyway, um, I wanted to, it's going to be a long video today. Um, I wanted to talk about something that happened in YouTube world this week and I'm looking at my clock and it's about to cut me off so I want to restart it and then get back in. My camera has a 20 minute timer to record and it'll cut off. Um, I may end up editing some of that out but uh, before it actually hits 20 minutes but um, I was like it's going to cut me off and I won't remember where so let me fix that before it happens. So in the world of YouTube. I ended up getting an email from my friend Katie before I, on um, through Messenger, and it, I saw her email before I saw my actual email from YouTube, and she's like, hey, did you see this? Did this happen to you? And I'm like, let me go look. And so, I originally when I started YouTube, I started with three channels. I had Carrie's Vlogs and Hauls, and that was like my main channel. I had a couponing channel, and I think I had a travel channel. And so eventually the couponing one and the travel one went by the way and I just started focusing on Carrie's vlogs and hauls. Well, roll around to the next year, I decided to start this channel and I was doing like cooking videos and vlogs on the other one 
and on this one I was doing hauls and sometimes I would do devotionals, other things. And then I was just like, I just can't keep up with both of them. So I stopped uploading to Carrie's Vlogs and Hauls and just used this one as my main channel. It took me a while to figure all of that out that this is what I wanted to do on this one. So, but I still have a lot of videos on that other channel and they were all monetized for the most part. There may have been a few of them that weren't, but for the most part, they were all monetized. And let me tell you, it took me one and a half years before YouTube or Google ever paid me um, for the monetized videos. It took that long. And when I got my first check, it was about $100 <laughs> after a year and a half of doing a lot of work. And so um, I kept on and... Um, I ended up with, I want to say there's at least two or three videos on my Carrie's Vlogs and Haul channel that has actually a lot of views on it, and I do make a tiny bit of money from those videos. And so the email that I ended up getting after my friend had messaged me and wanted to know if it happened to me was basically, um, YouTube is making some changes and we have demonetized all of your videos on Carrie's Vlogs and Hauls because you have not met our threshold. And it's something like you have to have a thousand subscribers and I think I have like 500 and something subscribers on that channel. And you have to have so many views. I want to say it was within a 12 month period or something like that. This channel thankfully um, <coughs> excuse me, met all the requirements to keep monetization on it. And literally, I don't get paid every month on here. It's um, every so often. I do this because I enjoy it, not because I am getting paid. <laughs> that is a little bit of a plus, and yes, I would like to make more money, and yes, I would like to get paid every month. It just doesn't happen. Um, some people get extremely wealthy from this, but a lot of people do not. The majority do not. Um, it's only a handful of people that are actually making livings and actually getting rich off of this. But it really um, kind of upset me and my friend a little bit because there's a lot of people on here that are trying, this is what they want to do for their career. This is what they want to do. And YouTube just took that ability to earn money away from them because it takes so long to grow a channel. This channel is very close to 6,000 people. And I want to say, um, I started this channel, it was either 2013 or 2014. But anyway, three to four years, I want to say it's probably 2013. And, uh, excuse me, that's more than three or four years. We're in 2018. I still think we're in 2017. Um, so it's been a long time and it grows so slow. But you know what? That is okay. I would like a larger channel, but it's okay. I still love doing this. I am still contemplating what type of videos that you guys want to see. And I will tell you, the people that generally leave me comments will tell me, I like your travel videos. I like this style of video. Thank you for doing that. And I appreciate that so, so much, you guys. I really, really do. So, you know, I will be talking more about travel this year. I will be putting up travel vlogs this year. I will be doing hauls this year. And um, thank you to every single person who has responded to my um, Gucci handbag reveal from Friday. I love that little bag a lot. It is so, so cute. Um, and after I filmed that video and uploaded it, a few days later, I got an email from um, um, Neiman Marcus and FedEx that they were shipping the other one. And I'm like, you just told me two days earlier, three days earlier, that you have no idea when it's coming. It may be February, it may be later, and then you ship it this week, which I'm happy about, don't get me wrong, but I was like, I wanted to do one video showing both of them. But anyway, after I get through talking to you guys in this one, I'm gonna go to the post office and pick it up. Pick it up. I have um, the more expensive items shipped to my post office, my PO box, and for those of you who have heard and have been told that FedEx, UPS, DHL will not deliver to post office or PO boxes is not correct at all. They will deliver. You just got to be creative in the way you write your address down. And um, a lot of times they will tell you that we won't deliver there. And it is legit true. If you like, like if I put Carrie Stanfield and I write PO box, I want to say it's I think it's 90496. I always have to look that up. That's the one I don't have memorized. So if I put that P.O. box down and um, 
uh, and I was like, okay, ship it FedEx. It will not get there. And the reason being, they have to have a physical location. FedEx has no idea where in the world that P.O. box is located. So what you have to do to get something shipped to your P.O. box, if you have one or you want to get one, and um, you have to get the actual physical address of the post office. So you'll put your name, physical address, and I don't even remember what that address is now, and then you put unit number, and then you put your box number. But whatever you do, do not put P.O. box. Unit, it's like unit number box, and then you put your city, state, and zip code. So at least that's the way it works in the United States. I don't know about anywhere else, but they will 100% legit FedEx, UPS, DHL will take items to your P.O. box or to your post office. So just wanted you guys to know that. Um, uh, oh, there was something else I wanted to talk about. I got so much stuff this week. I'm a little bit hyper today, and this is a super long video. So if you have stuck with me this far, thank you. Um, I have been working on my weight loss this week, and that is not what I'm going to talk about exactly because I want to. Um, next Saturday will be the last um, Saturday in the month of January, I believe, and I will tell you how much weight I have lost in that video. I kind of want to do it by the month. Um, but I have been looking for um, like what I eat in a day videos from people that look really healthy and that they know what they're doing on YouTube. So I watch several of those videos. And let me tell you guys, you have to be so aware of what these people are recording. I'm looking at somebody, I'm sorry, one of these guys that's going to the church next door just parked behind my car and has blocked me in and I have to leave. I'm like, seriously, dude? I'm like, I can't leave right now because I'm still in my pajamas. <laughs> I was going to go out there and tell him to move his car, and he's literally blocked me in. Uh, it's like, I, you know, I don't care that they're having church over there. I'm all for that if they want to. <laughs> Sorry about this rant. But it's like, don't park behind my car because you can't park over there. I'm like, um, anyway, I don't know what to do now. Um, I will figure a way to get out. Um... Oh, I'm sorry about that. Food videos. So you have to be so careful. Just keep in mind, unless you are a doctor, a nutritionist, or somebody like that, that knows what you are legit talking about, and they those people put videos on YouTube that anybody else, myself included, we're not experts in the system whatsoever. We're just average people. We don't know everything. I can't tell you how many times I have t I have said stupid stuff in my life, ignorant stuff, and I've said a lot of it on YouTube. Keep that in mind. And keep in mind that other people do this as well. So this one particular lady, I was watching her channel, and let me tell you, she looked really, really good. She was healthy, and what she was eating, there was absolutely nothing wrong with her food choices. But she was so ignorant in what she was telling people. I was so shocked at what I was hearing. And some people, I think, absolutely believed her. A few people called her out on it. And I'm not one to embarrass anybody or I don't want to leave negative comments. But I was like, you have got to be kidding me. Um, I'm, I don't want to say too much in case it reveals who she is. I can't even tell you her um uh, YouTube channel whatsoever I don't remember but I remember she was talking about eating a certain food and she said I like to eat this food because girls, she said it goes into my liver the food does not go into your liver she's like the food goes into my liver and it grabs on to toxins I am paraphrasing so hopefully nobody will figure out who I'm talking about um, but she did say that and it grabs a hold of those toxins and pulls them out of my liver and I'm just doing like, uh, you know, <laughs> oh, I was like, oh my word. First of all, if your liver cannot clean toxins out of your body, you have got a serious problem. It doesn't really need help with food to pull toxins out of it and your food does not go into your liver. I'm just like, well, your food <laughs> it just goes in. I'm just like, oh my goodness. Anyway, um, so be very, very aware 
of what you are watching and take a lot of it with a grain of salt <laughs> when you watch these videos. If you are watching a doctor, a nutritionist, somebody that has been trained, okay, the guy's moving his vehicle. He, I don't know what he did. He ran and came back out, so thumbs up to the guy out there. Um, but if, if, if you're watching a doctor or legit somebody that has been trained and somebody that can back up what they're saying with credentials, I feel comfortable with that and trusting what they are saying. That is also to say, I say that, but a lot of times doctors will have different opinions on things. So anyway, um, with all that being said, I, um, I'll talk more next week, I think, because I've rambled on way too long in this video, but I am doing well. Uh, weight's been up and down, um, but overall I'm happy with the results. I am still learning and working on um, all these, the, what I'm eating, what I need to be doing, but so far uh, the weight is going down and it's in the right direction. So um, anyway, let me show you the babies really quick. And well, I said that guy was moving. He's in his vehicle, but he hasn't moved it yet. So here's Coco and um, they are just about ready to take a nap right now as they are um, settling down from barking at all these people. So let me go get Chanel really quickly and um, then we'll, st uh, we'll end the video. Here she is and I just told her, I said everybody wants to see her. I hope you guys do. <laughs> um, anyway, she is doing really, really well. I think, I don't think there have been any incidents, any incidents with the puppies this week, which I am so thankful for. And they have been really good girls this week. They enjoy the snow, unlike their mom. And anyway, um, yep, she's going to give me a kiss. That is her favorite thing to do. So I hope you guys have a great week. And if you stuck with me through this video, thank you so much. And in next week's chat, I'm going to tell you a little bit more um, how much weight I've lost. I hope the number gets uh, more than it is today. And... Um, um, some stuff that I have bought and some things that I'm doing and I'm also planning on filming a low carb snack video I think I can do that there's no cooking involved so that is a plan that will go up sometime as well so thank you guys so much for watching I really appreciate it bye bye guys